and let the maidens which please the king be queen instead of Ashdod. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, the Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity that had been carried away with Jeconiah, the king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his great, his uncle's daughter, for she was neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, and Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took her, took for her his own daughters. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree were heard, and when many maidens were gathered together into Shushan, the palace, to the custody of Hegai, that Esther was brought also into the king's house, to the custody of Hegai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him and obtained kindness from him, and he speedily gave her things for purification with such things as belonged to her seven maidens, which were meet to be given her out of the king's house, and he preferred her and her maids unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she would not show it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house to know how Esther did and what should become of her. Now when every maid's turn was come to go in to King Ahasuerus, after that she had been twelve months according to the manner of women, for so are the days of purification accomplished, to wit, six months with oil and myrrh and six months with sweet odors and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given to her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned into the second house of the women to the custody of Sheash Gars, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go into the king, she required nothing but what he guy, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken to the king Ahasuerus, into the house royal, in the tenth month, which is the month to Beth in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in the sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast, and made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And when the virgins were gathered together the second time that Mordecai sat in the king's gate, Esther had not yet showed her kinder, kindred nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandments of Mordecai like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat at the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bichthan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth and sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. And the king was known to Mordecai, and the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen. Esther certified the king thereof of Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore, they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of Chronicles before the king. Chapter 3. After these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamidatha, the Agite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman. For the king had so commanded concerning him, but Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said to Mordecai, why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass that when he spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto them, that they told Haman, 
to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought scorn to lay on Mordecai alone, for they had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast her, that is the lot, before Haman from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar. And Haman said unto the king Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among us in the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's law. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed. And I'll pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have charged this business to bring it to the king's treasury. And the king took his ring from his hand, gave it to Haman, the son of Hamadabba, the Haggai, and the Jews' enemy. And the king said to Haman, The silver is given to thee, and the people also, to do with them as it seems good to thee. Then the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month. They were written according to all that Haman had commanded and to the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language in the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by post into all of the king's provinces to destroy to kill and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, in one day, even the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, and to take spoil of them for a prey. A copy of the writing for a commandment was given in every province, was published unto all the people, that they should be ready against that day. The post went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace, the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Shushan was perplexed. Chapter 4. When Mordecai, Mordecai received, when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out in the midst of the city and cried with a loud and better cry, and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among 